Okay, so today I am going to do uh, my personal top 10 the replacement songs. So this top 10 series about music acts that I think are both essential in general and also essential to me personally. Alright, stay tuned. <laughs> the replacements were punk rock or trinity rock band from Minneapolis, Minnesota. They are considered as one of the pioneers of pioneers of alternative rock. For most of his career, the band was composed of the guitarist and vocalist Paul Westerberg, uh, guitarist Bob Stinson, bass guitarist Thomas Stinson, and drummer Chris Mars. So in the top 10 payment videos, I kind of just ranked the song by the release order. I didn't really make a rank of the songs because I kind of just didn't want to. <laughs> Um, I kind of also wanted to tell us like a story throughout their career and for the replacements I want to try to just to make a rank of the songs in order like from 10 to 1 okay yeah okay so the number 10 the replacement songs uh, it's a song called beer for breakfast the replacements were alcoholics no secret about that Paul Westbrook once said, Sometimes alcohol made us fearless, sometimes it made us ridiculous, but it's all part of what made us great. Our impression of the replacements is them being drunk, wrecked, and in shambles. Once, the replacements were invited to play on Saturday Night Live, but they turned out to be utterly wasted on stage, and after that, they were banned from the show. <laughs> Beer for Breakfast is a song that is really silly and funny, and it just so the replacements. Number 9, Nowhere is my home. The replacements were thrown out of desperation. They all came from problematic family background with a history of alcoholism and abuse. They were all high school dropouts. Minnesota is cold and life can be boring. If they were in a band, they had no choice. Anywhere could be their home because nowhere really is. And that is what made and broke the band. They were so good at being sincere and unpretentious, but they also didn't know how to handle many things. Not only Bob Stinson's guitar work is amazing here, Westbrook's hoarse vocal singing, Nowhere is where I'm from. Nowhere. Nowhere at all. It's also incredibly touching, I think. Number 8. Hold My Life the silly and loud punk version of the replacements are great, no doubt about it. But what makes the, the replacements become one of the best is their authenticity and sentimentality. Anger, anxiety, frustration, glee, boredom, etc. Your basic dose of human condition is covered in their discography. Their lyrics are short, simple that even 9 year old can understand literally. But their portrait of an outsider young man's inner life needs further digestion. Home My Life is a song from the album Teen, which I think is an album of most great songs. Although many people seem to prefer the album Let It Be from 1984. Hold your life because you just might lose it. Hold it. Hold it, because you're gonna lose it! Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Number 7, Alice Chilton. <laughs> the song Alice Chilton is from the album Please to Meet Me, released in 1987. It's the first album without the participation of the former lead guitarist Bob Stinson. Before, Paul Westerberg used to have disagreements on musical direction with Bob Stinson. Paul prefers to write pop melodies, while Bob prefers punk. 
After Bob left, the replacements kind of just lost their edginess and rawness. Nevertheless, Alex Chilton is a great power pop song. Paul Westerberg was paying tribute to the big star from Man, Alex Chilton. Number six, within your reach. Um, personally, I haven't searched much about the gossip around the replacements, but I would be surprised if they had problems getting girls back in the days. They had attitude and style. They were the aggressive bad boys. They were also helpless, helplessly romantic. They were just like the James Dean characters. Within Your Reach is a romantic song about cannot live without someone's touch. Other affectionate romantic songs from the replacements are Favorite Thing, Birthday Girl, Aching to Be. So yeah, the replacements are helplessly romantic bastards. Number 5, Bastards of Young. To make a list of the 10 the replacement songs and not include Bastards of Young, it's just wrong or trying too hard to be edgy. Bastards of Young used to be my alarm clock in the morning because it's so loud and full of vitality. As I wake up alone, it works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> As a generation ethan, it also makes sense. Rebellion, skepticism, anti-authority. The replacements are the spokesman, spokesman of the misfits of the Generation X. Number four, Swinging Party. Yeah, so Swinging Party is the first replacement song that I heard when I was 16 through Google Music. Back when I was too innocent to, to relate the title to something like Swinger Party. I still clearly remember that summer when I was 16 years old, I was traveling in Beijing. So, as I was hesitating whether to choose exit B or exit C at the Beijing subway stop, and the line of the song at the swinging party down the line just appeared from my old MP3 player. Yeah, so, and then at the end, I, end up, I ended up choosing exit B. Sorry, <laughs> just some boring trivia. <laughs> you yawning? So, Swinging Party is a typical Paul Westerberg style confessional ballad. If being wrong is a crime, I am serving forever. If being strong and kind, then I need help here with this feather. If being afraid is a crime, we hang side by side. So, yeah. There's great lines about wrongdoings and self-blame. Number three? Number three now. Uh, <laughs> so number three is Color Me Impressed. The replacements are the representative alternative underground rock band from America in the 80s. The Smiths are the kind of equivalent of that from the UK. Both the Smiths and the replacements portray loners, outsiders, who are too proud to pander to the norms, and who like to mock the mainstream with both superiority and insecurity. Color Me Impressed is from the replacement's second album, Hoot Nanny. Color Me Impressed is catchy, simple, and the best rock and roll. Number 2 is unsatisfied. Yeah, how can you make a list of the replacement song and not include unsatisfied? It's such a great song, right? Unsatisf unsatisfied is the best song from their most acclaimed album, Let It Be, released in 1984. So 1984 is also the year where another important alternative rock band called Haskell Dudes, a uh, famous album Zen Arcade, were, was released. 1984. Yeah, also 1984 was the year that Prince Purple Rain. So obviously 1984 was very, it's a very fruitful year for about Minnesota music. 
I have always liked the raw emotion of this song, Unsatisfied. The replacements are experts of expressing any type of youngster angst, and their expression of personal frustration and fragility here is amazing. Paul Westerberg's hoarse, almost howling vocal conveys a sense of loneliness. Conveys a sense of longing that is incredibly touching as well. If you don't like this song, you have no heart. Okay, so it's last song and final song, my personal top one <laughs> to replace my song. <laughs> it's it's left it left it the dial. Yeah, making an order of the top ten replacement song was hard in general, but choosing number one was easy. Left the dial from the album Team from nineteen eighty five. It's an in- impeccable rock and roll song. Rock and roll song about college college rock in the eighties. Uh, part of why I chose this song is because it reminds me of a very specific specific time and place, and how I was feeling at the time in general. Uh, it's kind of private, and so I'm not gonna share it here. I'm sorry. <laughs> in in 2015, I saw the final show of the replacement reunion. Uh, yeah, so I. I dig really hard into my Google Drive, and then I found a shitty picture of of the Paul Westerberg picture that I took. Was there? Yeah, the stage and all that. Uh, I remember the show. The replacements were drunk, of course, <laughs> and their hearts just didn't seem to belong to the stage. And during the show, they announced that this was their final live live performance as a band. Nevertheless, seeing Paul Westerberg singing the hilarious line of the song "Left the Dial," like heading out to San Francisco, definitely not LA. I from just so memorable at the time. Yeah, so heading out, heading out to San Francisco, definitely not LA. <laughs> this line just now felt to make me laugh. It's just so funny. I don't know why. I think. Uh, I was happy also. In 1991, the replacements disbanded due to band members pursuing various projects. They were one of the best rock band in the 80s, but they never made it real big or achieved mainstream success. They were good at being wasted. They were good at being the authentic, passionate punk rockers. They were good at pouring their hearts out and being expressive, but they weren't good at not being true to themselves. They were their own worst enemies. They did not want to, and could not, pander to anyone. They couldn't play the game of the business world, so people who were far less talented than them ended up achieving more commercial success. Maybe deep down, they were scared of success. Maybe deep down, they felt they only belonged to the gutter streets of roadiness and chaos. They could not relate to the identity of rock star success and fame, so they subconsciously avoided it. The eighties passed, but there will always be new generation of youngsters relating to their replacement's mixture of pride, self defeat. An earnest longing, and Paul Westerberg certainly proved that to be a good lyricist, you don't need high bro vocabulary or perfect rhyming. Just being honest and being able to fully embrace your vulnerability is a big win. However, I do wonder how much of Paul Westerberg's music was written when he was sober. Without their armor of alcohol to take away the fear.
Okay, so that's about their, my personal top 10 their placement songs. Thanks for watching. Look me in the eye and tell me you did also.